Hi guys, and uh, Merry Christmas. It's officially Christmas right now, and I'm up, and I'm studying, I'm doing stuff. Family's making tamales, wrapping presents, doing their thing. But I was reading this letter. You guys have read this letter before. If you never have, uh, it came out November 16th of 2020. And this is Ryan Cohen's letter to the board of directors at GameStop. And I was reading it. And if you guys have never read it, you should. I'm not going to read it to you. It's about three pages long. And he tells you how he feels about the company and what he thinks the direction they should go. And by reading it, it gave me some insight. I'm going to tell you what it did for me. So I'm working today. And the place is packed it's the day before Christmas. So we're going to go drop this item. And they're like, hey, we need a forklift out here on the floor. I'm the senior manager. I'm going to walk in front. And the forklift driver is driving. You know? And I'm talking and I'm, he's like, hey, what's going on? What are you guys getting for Christmas? You know, we're having small talk. And so I bought a lot of items at GameStop. And I'm doing that. Then they started talking about investing. Like as we're standing out there, and I go, well, I go, well, you know, I buy GameStop stock. And he said, oh, that's dumb. And I was just like, hmm, okay. He goes, yeah, it's a terrible business model. It's, you know, it's fiscal media. It's going out of business. That's not a good investment. And I didn't have the energy, guys. I didn't even have the time or the patience to tell him uh, no, like to explain it to him. I literally was like, oh, you're going to miss out? All right, that's uh, that's on you. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, uh, that's that's awesome. That I go, how much research have you done into GameStop to think about it like that, to say that it's just this? And um, he's like, well, no one shops there. I'm just like, wow. You know what's wild, guys? Uh, I've explained this to you guys in detail, like shutting down stores, right? If I had five stores and I shut down two, that then forces the same amount of people to go to the other three, right? If you're in your town, right? You don't really lose anything. You actually gain. And I think by what I've seen this holiday season, I've never seen it like this. I saw GameStop packed. I saw GameStop selling everything. They had nothing left almost. You know, just PS5 after PS5. I compared it to last year when I was going in there and you couldn't find a PS5. You're like, hey, do you guys have one? We get two this week. Nah, I saw five walk out the other day. I was like, wow, those hit the bottom line hard. And the new slim PS5, right, with Spider-Man and or the PS5 with Call of Duty. So check this out, guys. I know we keep looking at GameStop and we look at the 10K and the 10Q and they versus last year versus last year, you know. But I read that letter from Ryan Cohen. And then I remembered all the DD we've been doing. Like, on the 10 Qs themselves. I think GameStop has more dollars per man hour and more dollars per building than they ever have right now. I think that's why the SGNA came all the way down below $300 million. If they can operate their company off of $300 million each quarter, which would put you at around 9 Plus the fourth quarter, which would be around like, from the way I look at it, about 380 max, right? Even if it's 350. And you're telling me they're going to operate at 1250 with their current footprint? That means they've cut out so many stores. If you remember this year, what we talked about, about 2023, it was the biggest year for GameStop as far as their leases go. They had over 1,400 leases that were up for renewal this year. And if they managed to cut out enough... I guess that was like one of the biggest points that Ryan Cohen talked about in the letter. He said, hey, GameStop's building, there's you know 24-month lease. A lot of them, 24-month lease, you can renegotiate or you can shut down and, and just keep it going with the e-commerce side where it's what they call always on. You know That's what online means. It's always on. And you can always order and you can always get delivered and that's a, it's a forever monster. And eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to churn into profit. So this quarter quarter four for GameStop. Merry Christmas. You guys got a profit. There is nothing they can do. I feel GameStop is, you know, the market share is one thing. Everyone wants to talk about addressable market cap, like what you could capture, what you could grab. But before you go grab it, let's grab it the right way. Let's not grab it with the overledge, you know, these, these margins that are just unattainable. 
to reset the deck on hours of operation, on pay, on structure, on benefits. All of these things are giving you a new slate. They're doing exactly what you want to do, cutting away the fat, cutting away the overextension, and operating a stealth, lean, mean, fighting machine. You know, when they say we want to see profits now, this is how it happens. And Ryan just didn't write a letter. You know, Ryan wrote this letter and he said, hey, listen, I bought in. But Ryan's bought in already, guys, just officially, if you guys are not doing the math. He's in for over $50 million of his own money. It once had a value of almost $2 billion. So, yeah, he's been up. You know, he's up huge and he still didn't sell. But now he's put his name, his credibility behind it. He's doing the job himself. And I, that just speaks exactly where I want to be. You know, the new revelation that they can now invest their money with Ryan's money and vice versa. You know, I feel GameStop's just to the moon and back at this point. People don't view GameStop this way, and they should. They are going to be profitable by half a billion dollars a year. And I'm not talking this year. I'm talking about the years to come. You're going to see $100 million profit every quarter. You're going to see that cyclical run for quarter four where they bring in $300 million cash and $250 million of profit. It's going to happen this way. It really is. The the math just works out in your favor because gamers are born every day. So with Christmas in front of us, I'm just telling you, what's underneath that tree for me is a lot of GameStop. And I've talked to plenty of people throughout the channel, you know, crowdsourcing, getting information. I just love that we have somewhere to come and somewhere to gather and somewhere to pass around the right information and, and battle, battle the naysayers. So coming up real soon, guys, uh, my Christmas gift to you guys. I have two more interviews for a documentary that, that's coming out real soon. Uh, I've been doing hours and hours of prep for that. And um, the documentary is focused on, of course, the overzealous individuals that are invested with GameStop. And whether you want to paint me in a bad light or a good light, however you want to paint me, just make sure you paint me. Just make sure you understand. I've said the same thing since the day I you know, I came onto YouTube. And it was, I felt this is an undervalued company. I feel the fundamentals are flawless. I love what Ryan Cohen is doing in silence. It speaks volumes, actually. And I just want to tell you guys that I love GameStop. I love you. And hopefully we'll have a great 2024. Me personally, I'll keep buying. I already told you that. Um, I wish you guys the best of luck in whatever you choose to do. But with that being said, it is midnight. It is Christmas. And I just want to tell you, GameStop. Can't stop, won't stop, GameStop. I will see you around, millionaires. And to everyone out there, I want you to have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And for the guys who won't listen, the forklift drivers out there who don't want to hear it, the guys who all think that they know exactly what GameStop is, I told you so. Peace.